Hello and welcome to a new video. It's me Martin and today I'm going to be looking at whether the M1 Apple Macs are suitable devices for online teaching. A few weeks ago Apple announced their new lineup of Macs and all these Macs included the M1 chip. The M1 chip is promising astonishing performance, especially with their CPU and GPU as well as their neural engine. The CPU includes 8 cores within the chip and the GPU also includes 8 cores. As everything is integrated within this M1 chip, there's no need for additional power to power up an external CPU or GPU. As well as all that included within the M1 chip, the battery is promising huge, huge improvements as well. Over a year ago I bought my MacBook Pro for online English teaching as well as general work purposes and it's been a great machine so far. I've been using this almost daily for general work purposes as well as video editing. Now the new lineup of the M1 Macs are astonishing and what Apple is promising is very very promising as well. So you might be thinking what sort of Mac should I get for online teaching and general work purposes? Well it much depends on whether you're going to be moving around and working remotely in different locations or whether you're going to be stuck in one location itself. Based on that, if you're going to be sitting down at one place all the time in your own home, I would recommend the Mac Mini. When you purchase the Mac Mini, it's not going to include a keyboard or a mouse as well as a monitor. So you need to include those in the price. And what is starting out as £699 for just a base machine, you're going to start looking around £1,000 once you include either the keyboard, the mouse and the monitor. And don't forget, when you're teaching online as well, you also need a webcam. So you need an external webcam to hook up to the Mac Mini. Now, if you're going to be moving around at home or outside, then I would recommend either the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro. There are different hard drive sizes that you can get with the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, but they're upgradable to one or two terabytes as well. You can also have connection to an external monitor and you can also include an external hard drive as well. Obviously, the price is the most competitive thing for the M1 range of Macs. And for me, when I bought my MacBook Pro last year, over a year ago, I spent over £3,000 on it. And if you're looking for a similar range model now for the MacBook Pro, you're going to be looking at around £2,000 for a nice, good model, very similar to what I've got as well. So there's a huge saving, about a third saving with regards to how much you're going to be spending on a similar spec to machine. Obviously the M1 Max are very new, there's very very few people who have got their hands on them and there's no way to actually test how effective and how powerful they are in regards to the MacBook, traditional MacBook over from either earlier this year or last year. You can remain quite cautious and you can hold out until next year maybe when there's going to be an M2 chip possibly with Apple or you could get the M1 Mac now if you're very keen to get either a MacBook Air just for general browsing purposes and very basic online teaching purposes or you could get the MacBook Pro which is a bit more of a workhorse and you've got all that fan and GPU and CPU as well. So um, if you liked this video, if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button, hit subscribe. Hopefully I can give um, a few more ideas with regards to what's on my MacBook when I'm working online. If you think of a question, please don't hesitate to ask below. And what would you like to see in my next video? See you soon, take care, stay safe, and happy teaching. Bye bye.